going on there, YouTube? Big day for RC every day, and a big day for you. Um, so, this video, we team up with RC Four Wheel Drive to do a giveaway rat rod build, and um, it's going to be pretty awesome. So RC Four Wheel Drive has hooked us up with everything that we need to build this. Um, so I'm going to start just laying stuff out here because there is quite a bit. So to start off, we've got three channel radio. RC four wheel drive. Um, go ahead and get this out of the way. We've got the hot rod truck cab from Shapeways from M Designs. Uh, it's the same one that's here on the farm truck build. Um, I've got some steel for the frame. We've got a small box of goodies. But we'll start with these down here. We've got the white dually wheels, rear and front. We've got Scale V8, we've got the Inglis intake, we've got the new K44 cast rear axle, the ultimate looking axle. We've got three sets of the Rode 17s for the dually wheels. I've got this new front axle that RC4 drive sells. Has a different type of uh, Steering link. I'm hoping will work in our favor with this build. Um, tons of accessories. I've got the RHS heads for the V8, Holly valve covers. I've got the R4 transmission. We've got the new Outcry 2 waterproof ESC. We've got 80 and 90 millimeter scale shocks, scale bolts, shock spacers, lots of little odds and ends. Um, water pump. Got some more spacers and a steering or a link for steering. Got all kinds of detail stuff. I've got the uh, belts for the V8, uh, water neck, my front suspension links, a scale punisher shaft version three, another steering link, another steering link, and a micro high torque micro servo. So. I've got a pretty good idea of what I want this build to look like. It's going to be a mix of the farm truck and the old number two. Um, you know how these things go if you've been watching for a while. I, I can sketch out a design, but once you start building, it kind of morphs into its own, its own thing. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what this turns into. I also have one more part, another 3D design. This is a new tractor grill from Awesome Designs. We, we bounced some ideas around and he came up with this one. Uh, something a little different. It's a little bit thicker and uh, two-piece so it'll be even easier to detail than the uh, current tractor grill that that we had together. So um, I'm gonna start putting stuff together. I think that's the first step. I need to get at least get the motor and stuff out, get the axle out, start looking at suspension and things of that nature and then we will start laying out a chassis design. Alright, so this axle is quite a bit different front axle than uh, the other ones I've been using. It's not a drop axle, and um, the leaf perches actually remove, and they're adjustable to different widths, which is awesome because that's going to work the way I mount the radius arms. I can just go into the holes and leave the brackets off altogether if I don't need them. Um, another neat feature, and the reason I went with this axle, this uh, turnbuckle arm. All my other axles, it's 
like this. So the steering has to be horizontal. But this one, it's going to allow us to have steering run this way. And it's going to give us, uh, hopefully, a more scale uh, steering option. You have to see, once we get the chassis and stuff going, which side everything's on. But uh, it's a pretty cool axle. It's nice, aluminum, and it has uh, the uh, uh, tie rod already there with the scale heim joints. They're adjustable. Looks a little bit more realistic. Um, I'm planning on using, uh, the RC4 wheel drive does make a scale heim joint for, you can just buy for rods. And uh, they were back ordered, so I'm waiting on those right now. But uh, I'm going to use that on all of the suspension. I think it's just going to look cooler. Um, yeah. So I've had to pick up some ball bearings since this is a semi-truck axle and these are semi-truck wheels. The bearings and stuff, it'll go right together. We won't have any issues with trying to convert a hex to a uh, bearing type mount. I got Luckily I ordered the right size. <laughs> Oop, another bearing fell out. One of my bolts fell out of this one. <laughs> so um, I don't have any front tires yet. But um, I'm going to get the body and stuff out and we can start looking at chassis designs. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and throw some radius arms on here. I'm probably going to have to flop the uh, hubs, the knuckles, because I do want my steering arm in the front, but I need my turnbuckle on the other side, on the driver's side. So that's something we'll have to look at doing here in a little bit. Um, I've got some scale bolts here, and I'm going to, yeah, that'll work. Thread these here. I'm using a RC four-wheel drive 129 millimeter link. And I'm going to have to use a small spacer because it will not fit into the gap in the axle here. So I'm going to have to get a little bit longer bolt. Alright, so I had to make a spacer for that. Um, everything was too wide. All of the uh, like steering link and suspension link spacers. So what I used was one of these. This is off of, to me, a semi-truck rear axle. And I just chopped the skinny end down enough to fill the gap. And it had that big, nice flat part to uh, keep everything straight and square with the axle. And uh, those 129 millimeter rods, aluminum links, are more like what I used on the number two build. And it's going to get that front end way out there. You can see that. That's what I'm looking to do on this build. There's the first mock up. Uh, I'm still not sure about the length of the front. I uh, may bring it back just a little bit. But um, I'm kind of liking the, the back. It's kind of a little bit closer to the cab than the number two build. And uh, I think that's. It's going to work pretty well. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure yet how high I want to build this either, how much ground clearance. The number two rig back there is utterly useless to drive unless you're on perfectly flat concrete. I mean, it has absolutely no ground clearance. And uh, my farm truck build is a blast to drive because it, it has some suspension and a little bit of ground clearance. It's great on the gravel and the dirt and stuff. But, uh, I don't know. It, uh, these things always look so good laying on the ground. But, um, yeah, so now it's time to start doing some measurements for the chassis. So I'm going to get some cardboard and uh, start getting an idea of the proportions I want. Alright guys, so I got the basic layout done. Um, I opted to step the front up here like I did on the number two. Mainly because the front axle is not a drop axle. And it drops a little bit like the, the stock uh, Tamiya axle does. But it's not like these other ones I've had that have a, a full centimeter of uh, drop to them. Um, and also, uh, when I traced this for the old number two build, I, did, I used the original template. And I, I've cut that down. That was one of the big hurdles I had to overcome when I built that truck was I made the rear step too high. So later I had to come back and, and cut both halves apart and weld them back together. So I, I went ahead and measured off of that <clears throat> and got it mocked up that way. So um, yeah, the next step I guess I'm going to clean up the edges on this and get it ready to weld together. And uh, then we can get it up next to the frame and make sure everything's going to job right.
All right, guys. So I got some parts in that I was waiting on. What we have are super scale Heim joints. This is RC four wheel drive Steely M3 rod in Heim joint pack of ten. These were back orders, so I wanted to use these because they're more realistic looking. Actually, look uh, like a real Heim joint. They have the uh, nut on here to adjust it and to lock it. So uh, now I can start mocking up this suspension. I've got the front done, of course, with the trailing arms. I've just got to throw these on the end, and we can start really looking at where everything's going to sit with the chassis. And then I can set the wheelbase with the rear suspension and start mocking that up. And then, once we have that laid out, hoping to go ahead and cut the frame in half and really get a look at what this is going to how it's going to turn out. So I found some rods. I'm going to use 60 or 59s on the bottom for the bottom links. The only other one I have two of is 70s. Uh, I had to use one of my own. Didn't get... Uh, I thought they all came in pairs so when I ordered the parts for this build I only got one of a couple of them. But um, yeah, I've got enough to make it work. The cool thing about these Heim joints and other than just being realistic looking joints with a very good movement is they're adjustable so say I since this is the only rods I have I can't get the suspension geometry right I can back these off and all I have to do back it off and then bring the nut down and lock it into place or I can throw a spacer in between there I'm not gonna lock it because I'm gonna start out with them well, there you go I'm gonna start out with them uh, all the way in and we'll see what what our pinion angle looks like but uh yeah they're they're like real ones they're adjustable they're like tie rod ends on a car and uh they look look a heck of a lot better than than this kind of stuff that i've been using so uh yeah i got the rear mocked up and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and throw these up on top and we'll start looking at how how it's all gonna jive see if i'm happy with the wheelbase if not i may have to uh order some shorter rods and uh have to wait for that but hopefully not so i'm i'm liking the wheelbase it's a little bit longer in the back than i originally intended but i think it's going to work in my favor with the suspension which i still have no clue about that's how these builds always go you just kind of roll with it one step at a time um, i'm not sure if i've said anything yet these headers are prototype tom at rc4 wheel drive uh worked with me on a design for some and i don't know if they're going to be in production I don't know if that's even a possibility or anything right now but I've got some prototypes and I will be using them on some other builds as well because <laughs> they're just perfect for for all this so uh, anyways um, so I've got it laid out I've already got my suspension mount holes drilled in the frame we did that earlier so now I'm gonna just get some basic marks I, I've got an idea for suspension so I'm gonna mark and drill a couple holes just while it's still one piece and um, I'm thinking about motor mounts also so I may go ahead and do something about that so I'm gonna mark up in the front and in the back I need something directly over the rear suspension roundabout the right place I'm gonna put a mark there and I think I'm gonna need something up here and the motor mounts roundabout here so I'm gonna do some brainstorming and see what I can come up with. Welded on the uh, motor mount. I just used more of the square tubing. Um, I did cut it down a little bit more. Um, those RC4 drive V8s you can see have two motor mounts, two bolts, I'm sorry, on each side. I opted to only use one because A, it's going to be difficult for me to transfer those exactly from side to side, it's same spacing apart and everything. And two, it's going to be bolted to the transmission, which is going to have its own mount. So it's going to be mounted like a real car. You're going to have one on each side of the engine and a transmission cross member holding it all together. <clears throat> Plus, I needed it a little shorter. So uh, I did it like this. So when I cut the frame in half, everything's balanced from side to side. There is no... Uh, wonkiness and you know trying to measure this raw steel and mark holes and cut them with it you know it, it makes it a lot easier to do as much of the drilling like this before you separate the, the frame rails and uh 
They originally only started doing these chassis out of square tubing because there was no C-channel steel this, this size, half inch. There's Nobody makes any that small. I've looked everywhere I can find online. And uh, if anybody knows where you can buy, you know, like three foot sections of half inch C-channel mild steel, let me know. But I've scoured the internet and metal shops, local fabricators, nobody has a clue. <laughs> nobody has a clue why you would need C-channel that size anyway, but, uh, you know, scale. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to drill a couple extra holes. I'm going to do one here where I marked for the, on the rear and one on the front where I'm thinking I might maybe put a cantilever thing for the suspension. I'm not sure yet. Um, the back will be pretty straightforward. It'll be similar to what I originally intended on the number two build, if it if I can make it work and jive and everything. Um, I got these RC four-wheel drive shocks they sent me. I think I've got 80s and 90s. So obviously they're not super, super scale for this type of build, but if we can do some cool cantilever stuff, then maybe maybe we could make it work. If not, I'll steal the uh, the bottom shock ends off of those and put some more scale, like King Holler Tamiya shocks. But uh, I, I'm digging the look of this man. This this body is a little bit smaller than the old number two body, and it makes those those semi truck tires and wheels look bigger and it just looks more proportioned. And uh, the V8, you know, of course, just those stacks is wild. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to drill some more holes, and we'll see what's next. Alright guys, so there's the roller. Um, I, I messed up. I ordered way too long of links for the rear. I can't even connect the, the upper links because they're too long. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to, I want to bring the wheelbase up probably three quarters of an inch. It's just going to give it that, that I don't know, it's going to give it a better look I think. It's the way I originally mocked it up and um, yeah. So uh, I got to take a little break and figure out where I can get some uh, proper size links at in a hurry <laughs> but um, yeah the chassis is only held together with the motor mount and the I put a 73 mil bar in the back between the holes that I had made for the uh, hopefully the cantilever mount for the shocks um, my rear frame section seems a little bit tall but I don't know it worked out with the number two build because the body was bigger. This one's a little bit smaller, so I'm not sure how it's gonna affect things. I think once I shorten the wheelbase, it's gonna it's gonna job just right. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do bedsides at all. I, I running low on uh, my vintage Tonka truck beds. It's what I used for the number two back there. I cut the uh, floor out and just used the bedsides. Um, I've got some 3D printed stuff here, but I'm not sure how that'll look. It'll be a lot lower, obviously. But, I don't know. Lots of ideas. Alright guys, so a little time has passed. I got some shorter links. This is a set of RC four-wheel drive 40 millimeter threaded rods. Had four of them. I really didn't like how far the rear end was sticking out. So I had to make some changes. I'm, I'm hoping these will work. I'm just kind of guesstimating here. I do have some other rods that I can use if I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and swap all these out and hopefully we can get the rear end and four link actually all bolted in and see how it looks. Happy with the 40 millimeter links. They, uh, I would like to gun a little bit shorter up top, but just wasn't in the cards. I could lengthen the bottom, get the pinion angle all right, but it's still once it's aired up or raised up or driving height, pinion angle is going to be 
improved so all the way down it's it's a little bit straightforward but it's gonna work and um, got pretty ridiculous amount of flex <laughs> so now that that's done we can start looking at I don't know what I don't know where to go next all right guys so next up I need to start putting the motor together now, I've got the uh, the uh, intake on it already and I've got some headers outside drying I painted them chrome I think it's gonna give a neat look with a little bit of uh, rust on them make them look kind of bronze and turned so um, yeah we've got the Holly Mickey Thompson style valve covers we've got the RHS heads if I can pick them up <laughs> and we've got an RC four-wheel drive what is this a 20 turn so it's not gonna be super fast but that's not really what we want with this build it's more just of a cruiser and a cool looking <laughs> it's more for show than than go um, using our, our RC four drive stuff's geared towards crawlers so everything transmission wise is typically geared slow for crawling um, that's a problem I've run in with uh, some of my other builds in the back there they just you can't get the speed out of them like your normal on-road car and you really don't want to go too fast because you know there are a lot of little detail things you don't want to break you don't want to have stuff falling off so uh, 20 turn it'll be plenty and uh, yeah the next step though uh, after this we've got to start looking at suspension I've got the body drying I've washed it it got dirty in here in the shop with the welding so I've got it outside drying and I'm gonna get some primer on it we can start doing a little bit of body work that's how I like to do it like the body work is tedious and annoying and it's just time-consuming so you just do a little here a little there I'll get the engine built and then I'll go spray another coat on it. that way I don't rush the paint job <clears throat> but uh, yeah for now we're just getting primer I'm gonna do a real heavy primer coat and then we'll sand it down smooth and see if it needs any more and we can do that and repeat until we get the desired finish so let's get started we've got also the water pump uh, the distributor I'm not sure if we can do that because it does not fit with this intake so I don't know how that's going to work yet I need to uh, do some research and see if they've got a workaround for that we've got our pulleys and belts for the front and I've got the water neck which I already have on there <laughs> have another one so let's get started Dry. I just painted them a few heavy coats of chrome paint and put them 
put some of the rust streaks on them. And it really, really likes that chrome. So it starts eating into it a little bit. Gives it a nice, rusty, galvanized look almost. Um, if you saw in the high speed clip, I made a little bracket to mount the distributor on the back of the engine. Since it will not fit the uh, Inglace intake. <clears throat> but I still wanted to use it, so I've got, it took a while. I've got all the little screws in. But I gotta wait till I put the headers on, and then we'll start running plug wires and see if we can make it look neat and tidy. Um, that's the big thing with those, it's always hard. You can't just make little zip tie clamps, because the, even the smallest zip ties I have are, look gigantic on there. So we'll have to figure out something. Maybe we can use some uh, paper clips or something to hold the wires together. But I'm gonna get started getting this thing wrapped up. So I got a little carried away off camera and uh, I had an idea for the rear suspension and I just did it and it works and it's pretty pretty complicated looking but it's really really pretty simple it's just a, a Kenny lever system I use some little these are the shackle plates off the Tamiya semi trucks and I just clamped two together and cut one of the corners off made a triangle um, put together two short plastic links for my links down to the axle and use the RC four wheel drive. I think these were 100 millimeter shocks. Um, the way it pivots, there's a long bolt starts out here, it has a washer, the plate, a washer, and a nut. And the nut is tightened down enough to where the plate doesn't have side to side movement, but it still will spin. And I just sprayed some, some uh, lubrication oil in there. That way then the whole unit I can just thread into this RC four wheel drive link that I'm using as a cross member and the same thing on the other side so I can crank it down nice and tight but but the nut inside here it's set the gap for the suspension for the cantilever link and it won't let it squish the plate and not allow the suspension to move um, I think I need to move my rear mounts out even further I've got one small spacer in there between the uh, axle and that but I think I need to bring it out a little further going to help the angles a little bit. Here's a better look at what we got. Um, I moved these links at the bottom back a little bit and smooth things up a little bit. <clears throat> I still might play with that. I've got a, a angled rod end on this side. I might put an angled one down here. Um, I can also use this link to adjust the ride height if I need a little more, a little less, I can change these out or add a spacer in there. And uh, it's that easy to change the stance of the truck without affecting any of the pinion angle or the uh, suspension rods. And again, the cool thing with those heim joints, if I need to adjust the pinion angle, I can just back them out and move the nut and tighten them back up. There's no need for spacers. I could put some in there just to add the extra support, but it really doesn't need it. Um, I don't know yet if I'm going to do a truck bed on this or not. I haven't thought that far about it. Uh, I've got the body getting some primer and I uh, have to start doing some sanding on that. I got my servo out. I've started looking at suspension a little bit, or steering, and again I'm running into the same problem I always do with these. Even with the RC four wheel drive axle, it uh, doesn't lend itself to the firewall mounted steering setup out the exterior link. Uh, just the track width on the front is too narrow so if I put a, a steering rod steering arm all the way back I'll show you all the way back past the engine to the cab you're not going to get very much steering because it's just too too far to reach and it'll hit the tire as it turns this direction 
So I'm looking at putting the servo in the grill and doing an external link like that, but uh, I really need a way to extend the servo, the actual thread, extend this out. And I don't think such animal exists. I'm gonna have to do some uh, looking online and see what I can find. So you watched me fab the front suspension. Uh, like I said in the beginning, this is kind of a combination of my number two rat rod and my farm truck build. So I, I really, I was looking at doing a cantilever setup in the front like I did on the rear, and it just isn't gonna work with the steering. This axle has the front to back steering arm as opposed to the left to right. And I really, I don't think I can make it work from the cab with the steering link. It's gonna be mounted in the grill and the shocks with a cantilever setup would have been all kinds of in the way and up under the headers and it would have eaten up too much valuable space so I opted to do this style like I did on the farm truck um, it's a lot cleaner I just used some flat bar stock quarter inch thick welded a upside down T and welded it to the frame it also acts as a front cross member so now the frame is completely rigid from front to back Welded cross member, motor mount, welded cross member, and we have our bolt in cross members on the rear. So, it's pretty, pretty straight, pretty rigid. I'm happy with it. And uh, I may have to add some springs. These are Tamiya uh, Grand Hauler shocks. They are a really good length. And I, I took the RC four wheel drive shocks I had. I think I had some 80 millimeter, 80 or 90 millimeter shocks, and they have a really nice joint. For the end of the shock and the Tamiya ones just have a plastic piece and it doesn't give you a whole lot of motion so I swapped out the RC four-wheel drive ends and I put the full spring from the, the 80 mil shock in this about a 60 mil shock maybe even 50 it's it's pretty short and um, I've done that combination on the farm truck and it worked out great but I may have to add another spring I've got these pin springs that I used on the farm truck as well and I just cut it in half and I'll put it on the outside and it'll give us a little bit extra stiffness because the rear with the Kenny lever is quite firm it gives us a little bit of movement but this is very very soft I'm barely putting any pressure so I think it'll be a little bouncy when driving but for now until I get the steering sorted out we're gonna rock it like it is um, you see here I did some painting today as well so this is the M Customs Rat Rod Truck Cab and the Awesome Designs new tractor grill, Rat Rod grill. And uh, so what I've done on this, I painted uh, just 3D printed from Shapeways and I primed it real heavy and I wet sanded the primer. Uh, I try a little bit different technique every time, just, just playing with it. Um, you can always add other colors underneath your, your primary color. Um, I painted the inside black, but I do that after the primer. So I sanded the primer down, got it uh, smoothed out a little bit. And then I painted the inside black, and I painted around the windows and stuff black. And uh, then I came back with the, uh, what is this? Where's the can? It's a Rust-Oleum. Uh-oh. I may have finished the can off. I think it's still in the living room. It's like a Satin Lagoon, I think is the color. It's the same color I used on my old Cruiser build. I still had a can of it left. I don't know, I was originally thinking blue on this, but I think this brighter shade is gonna, gonna fit better. So uh, I did that, and then I went back with... Uh, I got, my sandpaper, my grits are kind of off. I have some... all this wet sanding paper from doing uh, metal polishing. <coughs> so I used uh, some 400 grit of that to finish it, but before that I used a 2000 grit standard wet sandpaper and it, it seemed to take more off and you can see around the windows a little bit maybe there's some black showing through from where I sprayed the window edges and uh, but yeah we've got the white showing from the plastic we've got primer showing through and we've got black and some spots showing through and I spent 
maybe 30 minutes in the sink, wet sanding those down, trying to play with, with where it's wearing at. Um, there's a little bit of texture in some of the paint. I'm hoping the rust gets in it and stays. It'll make it look like it's cracked a little bit. Uh, that paint, being a satin, it sprayed differently than the, the glosses that I've been using. So I was excited to see that. Some of it's perfectly smooth. And then there's some light texture right here. And then there's some wear through where you can see the primer and the white. And it's just kind of a nice blend. It's kind of like what I did on this body. Except I finished this one with a... Uh, gloss paint and then wet sanded it so we got a nice smooth semi gloss finish out of it this one will be a little bit more flat but uh so the next step I need to paint the window edge the window molding I'll just use my black paint pen for that and uh, then I'll rest over the whole thing and we'll dab it off I've got everything set up here I'm gonna use my AK rust streaks and got my brush I never clean because it doesn't matter, it's supposed to look rusty. It's a couple spare shirts here to dab it off or wipe it off depending on how it starts setting into the paint. So uh, I'm gonna get my paint pen and we'll get started. So I did a little work off camera, I'm running out of time for this build, and uh, so I just need to focus on getting it done as opposed to uh, making the video. I got my steering set up, my grill is mounted, the servo is mounted to the grill, and the grill is firmly mounted into the chassis, will not come out. Uh, all that's left on that is to make a link to connect that small servo horn to the normal sized link on the axle. It's going to give it a neat look. I, you know, I've seen a lot of rat rods that'll have a link go all the way to the cab and they'll have an, a steering arm stick out of the firewall. It just won't work. These axles are too narrow. The bodies aren't narrow enough to allow enough movement. The tire will hit the tie rod. So I went ahead and did it like this. We're not going to get that kind of turning out of it, but it's going to be neat and exposed link and everything. Um, I did a little metal brace to mount the servo to the uh, grill and uh, use some scale hardware, some uh, zinc coated bolts. Um, also, I went ahead and added some springs to the shock. See, I put it has RC foot, these are to me a grand hauler shocks, RC four wheel drive springs inside, uh, some springs from ballpoint pins on the outside, and I went ahead and painted the axle flat black. I was gonna rust all the axles and stuff, but I really, after getting it together, I kind of like like the way it's looking. It's a mix of old and rusty with shiny and chrome. I don't want to mess up that motor. It's just too too pretty. With all the detail work, the black uh, Mickey Thompson valve covers and the aluminum heads, they just really, I like it. So I'm not going to mess that up. Uh, the grill is a little crooked, but that's, you know, the nature of the beast. I'm not going to worry about straightening it. I think it, it adds character. That grill from Awesome Designs is nice and it's thicker and more durable than the uh, Farmall style grill that we did before. And uh, it's got some scale bolts holding the grill on. I did paint that chrome and weather it with the uh, AK rust streaks and it gave it kind of a nice rusty pipe look. That's my, my new signature uh, patina, the rusty pipe look. But uh, the front suspension is a little springy, but it's pretty firm. I think it, it'll carry the weight well. Uh, moving around to the back, 
my rear cantilever setup was acting kind of wonky so I, I decided it needed more springs as well so I added some ballpoint pin springs on the shaft of the shock and now it's, it's very sm firm very smooth fixed all the issues I was having with it not not springy at all like the front it's gonna keep the power down to the ground really well so um, I went ahead and you saw I put windows in the, in the cab just use the package for the K44 cast axle and I cut the Lexan into strips and hot glued it in place. I did go ahead and sign the inside because you know it's kind of kind of like art for me and I want to commemorate it. And whoever wins this thing is gonna get a piece of uh, me <laughs> piece of my my art so figured I'd put my name on it somewhere. Um, I do have a steering wheel drying I just used an old uh, Tamiya Hilux or High Lift Toyota steering wheel. I painted it all flat black and we'll get that mounted to the dash inside the body here before long. I uh, just gotta let it dry. Um, so yeah, now I've run my servo wire. I had to put an extension on it. And uh, I've got to do the link for the steering and we'll start looking at mounting electronics. Then we can, once we kind of get it tested and working, then I'll go ahead and throw my other header on, run my plug wires, and hopefully be good to go. So um, I need a place to put my electronics. And on my farm truck build, I kind of got lazy and I just stuck them to the inside of the cab, which makes removing the body kind of troublesome. So I think on this, I'm going to mount some kind of plate across here, and I'm just going to have everything mounted to it. Um, battery. I don't have anything small to test it with. Whoever wins it will likely need a uh, small lipo, something a little more space-minded. Everything I have are stick packs, so it's going to be awkward like it was when I drove my farm truck, but I think it'll be cool. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get to work again, start looking at electronics okay, now. So there's my steering link. It actually worked out really well. Um, I am kind of worried this servo... I think it's one of the RC four wheel drive like pump servos for the hydraulic systems on their bulldozers and construction construction equipment, and it doesn't really have any any limits. And the radio uh, is not programmable enough to set limit limits. I don't think so. We'll have to see how how this might work out. Turning radius is pretty good. So here's the electronics. I just made two little metal plates and bolted them to the chassis. Um, there's still room for the drivetrain to go in. I need a longer drive shaft. The one I, I got from RC4 Drive, I underestimated how long I needed it to be. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do a function test here and see if everything's jiving and working, right? Fingers crossed. All right, guys, it's alive. Everything's working and jiving. Steering is perfect. Happy with it. Um, just got to find a drive shaft and we'll get the body buttoned up and hopefully get it out for a test run. Uh, I'm excited. It really came together pretty well. I, I'm, you know, these things kind of start out with an idea or a vision and it always morphs and changes as you go. And uh, this one come out pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna start digging around, see if I can steal a drive shaft off something for it. And maybe we can get it outside for a little test run.
all of it. Uh, I just got back in from the run. It's a little slow, but uh, that's what RC4 Drive wanted. They didn't want to get too fast and make it easily damaged and stuff like that. So uh, pretty happy with it. It'll still do burnouts in the gravel. Ground current clearance is a little bit low. Uh, I was hoping it would be more like the farm truck, but that's not how it worked out. But uh, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I got my steering wheel in. I'm not sure if you can even see it. I painted it black. I probably should have added a little color to it, but it's in there. Uh, those uh, spark plug wires. That is a tedious mess. Oh, they were. That took forever. That you could put them on the on the plug end real easy, but getting them on the actual distributor was was very tedious. Um, I just zip tied them together, trying to clean it up a little bit. Didn't, uh, I could have used a different color, but <laughs> it, it's, yeah, those are, are very tedious and troublesome. Um, so I installed a radiator hose. I did that off camera, I think. And um, it's RC four wheel drive radiator hose for their radiator set. Obviously, the radiator is too big for this uh, uh, grill that we're using. But I used some uh, steel brake line. And I put in the radiator hose around it, slid it in there, trying to help keep it, give it some shape because it is kind of thin and it was kinking in some spots. So uh, it's routed through, and then the other side routes out. There is no radiator in there, but you know, <laughs> you get the uh, the gist of it. But man, that thing looks looks wicked. Let me give you some different camera shots. I took a ton of pictures outside. I'll have a slideshow here at the end, so you can see. Uh, See some better pictures of it. I was, had to get out and get some, some Texas dirt on it. So whoever wins it, have a little piece of Texas with them. The suspension works excellent. It has a fair amount of flex. It's not too springy when it's actually bobbing down the road. Uh, the rear is fantastic. It is super firm, smooth. Those double springs back there really made a, made a world of difference. Um, man, this is just too cool. So, uh... Yeah, check out RC Four Wheel Drive for the details on how to win this, and stay tuned here for a slideshow at the end, and I will give you information there as to how to enter to win this thing. So I uh, appreciate you watching, and be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Follow along on Instagram and Facebook, RC Every Day, and uh, yeah, keep it scale.